Hello, oh, you're here. Are you there? Hello? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Peace of blessings, family. Um, we give thanks and honor to our ancestors and those who have gone before us. I am King Obadele, also known, well, I am King Teasdale. Andre Teasdale, also known as King Obadele. Obadele is uh, the king reaches towards home. It's a Yoruba term. It's my spiritual name, and I am glad to be here with my beloved wife, Arlene of uh, Kahet. Uh, Kahet is a Sanskrit uh, meaning purifying light of God. You know where it comes from? She, she dug it up from somewhere and she uses it. <laughs> oh. We, so it's associated, uh, I, I got it from uh, the readings of a spiritual teacher that I follow, and it is associated with a, um, it's associated with a, what is it called? Hmm. Empowerment uh, prayer, and that, that uh, incantation that specifically gears towards bringing in the purifying light of God. And with speaking of light, there is the festival of light that is occurring as we speak by many who are of the uh, Jewish faith or the Jew, 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 Judea, Judaism, 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 mm -hmm. and Judeo Christianity, Indeed, well, and all okay. that stuff. Um, and, and, and it's interesting how they all are interconnected. Let's see who's calling. Hi, Michael Hey, Campbell. Michael Rivers. What's up? Michael Michael, 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 Michael Campbell, and Michael, Campbell Rivers. Rivers. Still. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Peace of blessings, no doubt. Um, and, and what I find interesting is that in the uh, Jewish tradition, the um, Kanakia is what is celebrated for this festival of lights, which is odd to the extent that it's not a really a holy, let me see how I can put this, of the sacred Jewish holidays that there are. This one is not one of the most sacred, but it is celebrated primarily because of the miracle that had occurred in which the rededication of the temple was made manifest of which there was such a short turnaround and the temple being taken back from the king Antiochus the fourth because he wanted to well, he, in essence, desecrated the temple by doing things in there that would, the Jewish would not have done. And in looking at it, I see the correlation in so many things of which we are currently dealing with in these days and times. And the miracle that is celebrated of the Kanakia, which is what is known as the menorah, uh, which is by theory a seven candle delabra. The menorah is actually nine candles on it, signifying that there was enough oil for eight days, which was not supposed to be enough oil for eight days. But in the rededication thereof, the blessing and the confirmation from the divine indicated that what was done was done well. What was done was, the, they, they had enough, <clears throat> in essence, enough of the foolishness because the king was taking everything from them as far as their customs and the way of life in which they had lived it and wanted to strip them of their customs to the point to where they could not even read the Torah 
uh, they could not read the, the, the their sacred books. They were to be indoctrinated to be Romans, period, and get rid of everything else. And uh, family, uh, Matthias, Matthias, his family was known as the Maccabees. Because they were like, oh, hell no, we ain't going for this no more. <laughs> so <laughs> they revolted. And in the revolt itself, they took back the, the temple. And there's a Jewish tradition of the dreidel, which they were playing to have the soldiers believe that it was just a game, when in actuality, they were still studying their sacred text. I find it interesting that this has happened because last year, the Christian holiday, Christian, non-Christian holiday, if one may say, um, the reason being is because there is the, the, the melding together of the celebration of a tree that was more pagan than the celebration of the birth of Christ, which really, from historical documentation, did not happen in December. But that's another story altogether. But the reason I bring it up is because it, the two, the Hanukkah and the Christmas celebration or the birth of Christ does not fall together because they have two different calendars. But it happened last year. And what I thought was odd about that is last year there was such turmoil in our experience across the board. Black Lives Matter was kicking off the, the uh, issues with the government and what was kicking off in regards to the, the, the quote-unquote reigning president, which now has come to a place to where he was elected out of office, but he still holds true to a comment that he made is that there is nothing that can convince him that he did not win the election. I heard that as a news report, and what blew me away about that is a story that I'm writing in regards to the Earth being given to the authority of a dark force, which was not dark at the time, but became darkened because of ego and self-centeredness and trying to make a name for himself or himself and then when he came to the council and the heavenlies he was kicked out along with all of his followers so it's interesting that all of this comes together at a point in time such as this because of what's going on around us and today's point is that History repeats itself in such an amazing and interesting way. <laughs> it keeps repeating because we keep we keep not learning the lesson. Right, and I mean that's that's the real deal, and so reason and passion comes together here because passionately we know that the Donald is indeed, for if he was not, he would not be putting such energies to what he is putting forth, as well as those who have recognized that celebration of the Festival of Lights is an important, integral part of their life's living. And what's interesting is that there may not be those who are of the Judeo-Christian belief who celebrate this, but when we look at, let's say, Black Lives Matter, and recognizing the importance of all things, well, all things matter. And the thing is to synthesize these, to understand the newness of our experience, which now this COVID has brought everything to a standstill and tells everybody 
to look at things from a totally different perspective. And that's some real talk because people are dying and this is no joke. And people don't know how to respond to this. So reason and passion sounds to be the wisest thing to delve into at this point in time, which the book Khalil Gibran, the, the Prophet, the prophet mm -hmm. brings to us. So with that being our introduction, so it appears, <laughs> do you have any comments you'd like to share? No, well, let's let's start off by reading his there's there's only two pages. Oh pfft. There's only two pages. There's but only two many. pages, but but there's a lot of context within within those two pages. You say two pages, I think it's three two pages. Yeah, You're right. Two, two pages. Why would I even doubt that? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two pages. So okay. you want me to start off? I'll read one page and you read the other? No. You can stop at this right there. And then I'll read the rest. Okay. So your your hand actually went to peacemakers, but you want me to read all of that. Right. Okay. To so, to the period. I mean the question mark. Understood. Understood. So and this priestess spoke again and said, Speak to us of reason and passion. And he answered, saying, your soul is oftentimes a battlefield upon which your reason and your judgment wage war against your passion and your appetite. Would that I could be the peacemaker in your soul, that I might turn the discord and rivalry of your elements into oneness and melody. But how shall I, unless you yourselves be the peacemakers, Nay, the lovers of all your elements. Mm -hmm. The lovers of all, all your, your elements. elements. That's deep right there in and of itself because wisdom is an element. Reason is an element. Love is an element. Passion is an element. And you can break these things down or you can bring them all together as a synthesis to understand the truth of what is being said. For the reading continues, <clears throat> your reason and your passion are the rudder and the sails of your seafaring soul. If either your sails or your rudder be broken, you can but toss and drift, or else be held at a standstill in mid-sea. For reason alone is a force confining, and passion, unattended, is a flame that burns to its own destruction. Therefore, let your soul exalt your reason to the height of passion, that it may sing. Now that's deep. Let your reason be exalted to the height of passion. So, let reason also have the flame that burns, that takes it to the place it ought to be, that it may sing, and let it direct your passion with reason, that your passion may live through its own daily resurrection, every day. Every day. And like the phoenix, rise above its own ashes. Hmm. I would have you consider your judgment and your appetite even as you would two loved guests in your house. 
but let us let us pause here <laughs> for two loved guests in your house goes into another dimension that is even deeper than what we've already talked about so we got to handle the depths of what we spoke false let's do that let's do that your soul is oftentimes a battlefield upon which your reason and your judgment wage war against your passion and your appetite. What say ye on this, my dear? So, uh, right when I read or when I read this passage, what I automatically wanted to go into was... Uh, a tale of uh, how I wanted a relationship to look for me. And now, now, before she go there, let me just add, your soul is oftentimes a battlefield. It's the key here. Mm -hmm. So, there's a fight going on. Mm -hmm. Just want to add that. Anyway. Go on. <laughs> By the way, hi Michael. Sorry. Hi John. Uh, hi Nicole. Hey Rock. What's up? <laughs> Blessings. Hey Nicole. Hey John. Hey. Go ahead. So. So any anyway, um, I wanted the I, I had wanted this relationship. It was a romantic. Uh, I was I was hoping that it would become a romantic relationship. Um, but the person had already indicated to me. That that they weren't attracted to me in that way. Um, so, but the thing that was really interesting about it was I knew that I knew that God had put the relationship together in the first place, and and so my my passion at the time was sort of overriding my reason. And I had gotten to a place, especially when it came to relationships, with just accepting what it was that an individual would say that, you know, what their intention or what their their place was or their mindset about the relationship. I would just, you know, let that be. Um, but especially since I knew that the divine had intervened in bringing us together in the first place. I really had to be in a place of saying, okay, I really had to step back from the passionate part of the more passionate part of my nature because a lot of us do that. A lot of us, especially when we are young, we, you know, the heart wants what it wants and we will, you know, we will let our heart drive, you know, be in the driver's seat, never mind whether or not the person is a kind person, whether or not they actually want the relationship, whether or not, whatever the case may be, it, it's hi Valerie, and regardless of whatever we may may think or whatever we may think or or feel, we will let our emotions drive us into the ditch. <laughs> so I had, you know, with it with. With the divine intervening in this relationship and bringing it together, I I had to sort of step back and say, okay, um, whatever my intentions or my desires for the relationship to be or whatever I would want it to look like, let me step back from that. And I I prayed over the relationship and just say said, you know, I'm surrendering this to God, I'm surrendering it to the divine to elevate this relationship into what it's supposed to be as to as opposed to what my desire is because because I am having my human experience my human experience <laughs> when I am in the driver's seat is not always right so and I do that for for almost everything in in my experience like regardless of what it is that I may be wanting I surrender it to the divine and it turns out the divine has a whole lot better um, when I do that the results are a whole lot better than what I may have had myself so the result of that relationship when I decided to yield it to the divine was that 
the relationship developed a sort of a richness that allowed me to be in a place of understanding myself into rela in relation with other people, especially of people of the, uh, of the opposite sex. And to have a different kind of relationship with men than many of the women that I had known. And there had been a lot of a lot of growth in that relationship because it it, it, it created a relation a friendship that um, that has a closeness, but it wasn't necessarily with a sexual bent. And what happens is that when you are in that place of surrendering it and surrendering it to the divine, it is fully supported by what is necessary for your soul's evolution or for your soul's uh, highest expression of itself because not all relationships are designed for us to have you know that sort of male female that male male female <laughs> connection that we're always associating with a romantic love well it don't even have to be romantic love I remember when I was hanging out in the streets and um, I, I, I associate more with women anyway uh, just because I'm drawn to them, there's something beautiful about them. I just don't know quite what it is, but it's <laughs> something that just pulls me towards them. And with that being said, I remember I, I told one girl, I said, well, I was like, look, shucks, I, let's go straight to the point. I mean, you a man, you, you, you're a girl and I'm a man, and I mean, let's do some things because that's what happens. And she was like, no, not like that, no, way, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, oh, "Well, come on now, for really." But there's lust of the flesh, which is another totally different experience. When we see what religious and spiritual traditions have the tendency to do to us in regards to passion because with passion and the knowing of the lust of the flesh the tendency is to bring something to that aspect of the passion of the the the, the, the conscious mind to make you feel bad about it or you're not supposed to be thinking like that or acting like that or we need to find a way to suppress this thing uh, so mm -hmm. keep your clothes on you know wear a long dress you know don't let them see your booty shake Lord have mercy <laughs> hold still don't just just clap your hands matter of fact give me the tambourine back there something's shaking too much you know the 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 aspect of suppression of passion brings a suppression of emotion and the desires to have spirit operate as it ought can be hampered because passion has not been allowed appropriately to be appropriate. So I have written here Unfortunately, religious and spiritual traditions have a tendency to want to control or to control or suppress passion, but without passion and passion expression, what becomes of emotion? What becomes of sex and its appropriateness in a loving relationship? Passion is the fire. That powerful, intense turbulence of ecstasy that gives meaning to purpose and a reason to action but passion unattended as was stated is a flame that burns to its own destruction without conscious or divine guidance boundaries that are set that are set to bring some sort of 
I want to say be strength as opposed to control uh, that is appropriate for the moment. Um, I mean, we all have looked in another person's eyes and have been drawn to them and um, there's times where you may even have the feeling of wanting to tear somebody's clothes off but at the same time you have to be mindful that if you're in the presence of a public public eyes uh, that's not the thing to do right now <laughs> so you can't let passion just go go for it go and run them you up know? Um, so there has to be that thing that brings that aspect of reason and there was there okay so I, I've been um, there were like a few well, a few months ago I have been watching a, a few episodes of Black Love and there was this one couple where more, the, the husband was actually feeling an attraction for someone else and it was really interesting the way that you know that the couple themselves um, dealt with that and again we were talking about surrendering to the higher aspect of ourself to our divine nature uh, turning to turning to God um, but the wife's you know the the husband was kind of acting strange and so his wife says and says to him you know above all else you are you know you and I are friends you're my best friend so if there is anything going on in your experience you're safe enough with me to share this now this is I have to tell you that I think that 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 particular type of mindset does take a great deal of uh, emotional intelligence so he, and maturity maturity yeah I mean and the thing was is that she was uh, she was on the young side so it, it really spoke to her it was it's a real compliment to her her perception of their relationship mm -hmm. and so he shared that with with her that he shared with her that he was having this attraction to this other woman and so she's like okay so what we're going to do is that what we're going to do is I'm going or what I'm going to do for you and you know is I'm going to pray for you and pray for you to have the fortitude and the nature to to deal with this in the most enlightened and in uh, enlightened way that you possibly can and so I think that understand that that when you are in relationship in relationship and when you have a friendship like that that understand that when you are coming together with your with your life partner that there is you the other person and then there is the you as a whole and so that what had oh he was over to, he was able to overcome that 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 attraction that he was having for the other person or be able to see with more clarity what that was being what was being represented to him in that moment and there will be things in the world that could possibly trip you up like that but the great thing about that was because and again this was this particular action that that this couple had taken um, was something that uplifted both of their souls because they realized that the relationship itself was a place to uh, a place of a place of safety that they can go and be honest and transparent about what's going on and not be driven by their human passions because you know the thing is is that there are certain passions that are uh, are to a benefit to you if you have a passion to teach if you have a passion that is driven by by that inwardly governed aspect of the soul that is looking to express itself and then there's some passions that are just driven by our physical beingness here on 
the planet Earth. <laughs> uh, to, which I think addresses the point of the need for prayer as you brought it forth because it's reason and passion that actually lives together within the house which is you, which is the temple. And uh, the, go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah, which is, you know, which really, really, you know, speaks to this, this point here where he says, for reason... A ruling alone is the force of confining, and passion undetended is the flame that burns to its own destruction. So the thing is, is that our, our passions can destroy the very thing that we have, that has more value for us, that has more value for even the soul itself, which is really sort of imperative that you bring that aspect into into your relationships and all, and have it be a sort of a governing force so that the, so that there is balance so that there is not that war within <laughs> the war within like I should not want that and the thing is is that it, the thing is is that if you don't even really if you're not in a place of being honest about those things uh, in your in your life and they they can run them up. I know that I, I know that there had been times when when I spoke truth into what I was experiencing in a given moment. Like I was back in high school and there was this guy who used to scare the living bejesus out of me. And I don't know what that was. I, I don't know what it was about it. There was a part of him that that may my thought was is that he may not have been Quite right. I did not think that he would commit murder or anything, but he, he, you know, there's something about his energy. There was something about his energy that was off. And so one day, you know, he and I, he and I are walking down the hall, and I actually told him, you know, you're kind of scary. <laughs> you're kind of scary. Now the thing is, is that if I had let my passion about that that feeling that I was having about him to, you know, run amok, uh, I may have been in a place of actually mistreating him and, and, bringing, and bringing to myself. Um, hi, Inhotep. Uh, bring, bringing to myself the, the experience of, of his wrath if I was not actually uh, honest about that. But the thing that was funny was he actually, he actually laughed at me. Or he actually laughed at what I had to say. But what ended up happening was because I spoke truth into that moment. Um, and I was honoring that aspect of myself. Uh, of the uh, Honoring that, that aspect of myself. When I spoke truth to that, I no longer had that experience of being afraid of him anymore. But again... It's one of those things that, you know, you continually have to work on and govern yourself by, by a set of principles that are divinely guided. It's interesting how you say that because what I'm noticing here is <clears throat> the aspect of balance. So it says your reason and your passion are the rudder and the sails of your seafaring soul. We are travelers. And in this journey, we are the expression of many things. And the expressions are to be more observed before acting upon them. Because one is the force, the, the breath that empowers, gives power, that is like the engine, it's like the motivation to movement, to action. And the other is the guidance system that allows a safe journey, uh, a, a course 
of direction when linked together to allow the soul's journey to be for this for its highest good um, so this perfectly represents the synthesis of reason and passion as we are beings that exist within God's realm where all things come together and in this we come to understand to synthesize is to combine so to form a new yet complex product we're dealing with the COVID now and all of these crazy things that are going on in our life yet we have to see these all as one thing that's moving us into the future and how we allow this balance to come as the example that moves us into perfect harmony is what we choose it to be because we are creators of our own reality when we embrace that as truth when you do not accept your authority your God-given authority then you are controlled by forces outside of yourself when you're controlled by forces outside of yourself then you are claiming something else to be God or your God or a God a God over you than what has already been placed within you for the kingdom is already within and we have to activate that kingdom and recognize it for what it represents so when it speaks of passion I think of the wind and the wind can be a gentle breeze that blows through the trees or it can be it can be a, a, a gale force wind that that blows so hard to where the leaves on the tree are, are, are just snatched off and tossed and blown any and every direction or it can be of such a force to where it's a hurricane and it's ripping the trees up out of the ground in and of itself but then the aspect of nature is that place of calm and peace these are still the same things that are going on in your life's experience but look at the contrast and the difference thereof for you can sit in the forest and you can see the trees and you can rest in solitude and meditate and feel the presence of life which has its aspect of passion because life lives and gives now if you're in a forest where there's nothing but dead branches and everything has been dried up something has happened but what is that in conjunction to your experience and what is to come of the future of this place for sometimes the forest can burn a flame only to have new seedlings come from the ground to produce a brand new forest uh, okay so yeah. should I continue reading um, no, I want, you got I, thumb, thumb. I, I, I'm, I'm going to uh, give us some more I, well I'm going to add a little bit more right. that would that because you you did go down the rabbit hole right over I that love exit. rabbit holes yes he does <laughs> 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 so so essentially what what I heard him say is that 
that collectively that the world that the world is dealing with the aspects of itself or the people or the beings are dealing with the aspects of themselves that is not aligned in alignment with their higher purpose that they have let much of their passion overrun <laughs> overrun and burn you know the things that they would that they honored about themselves because they have not dealt with those things that are not going quite right in their emotional world and when you are not dealing with your stuff it will come up <laughs> it will come up so so the manifestation um, regardless of how it came into in, into physical being um, the manifestation of this uh, disease in the you know the, that's taken place in the world that has taken out many many people um, but this disease has brought up really like our neurosis for lack of a better term and so everything that he said was pretty much about that in it and it's it's this experience for as for our individual selves is for us to deal with our own stuff and to also um, pray for the enlightenment and in the healing the emotional healing that is required for the rest of the world to just get on board with where it is that we're supposed to be because you know they, they, there has been just like this set. all I'm thinking about in this uh, with all that's happened in 2020 is that the world for the most part is going through its emotional catharsis of all of this stuff that's just not right with our consciousness that needs to be cleaned up and for those of you who are just wondering like what the heck is going wrong the people seem to be going crazy the thing to do is to pray for others during this time because uh, as mentioned previously in one of our earlier episodes the experience of life's living is like a pendulum and it can swing from one side to the next because it is perpetual in motion and when it swings so far to one side beyond where it once was it's only to be balanced by the swing of it in the other direction if you notice there's more women in government now than was ever been mm -hmm. here Mm -hmm. What I thought was interesting is when Arlene had mentioned the thing of dis-ease. The country had an aspect of dis-ease when the election previous had its results. And the dis-ease affected and infected the rest of the globe in such a way to where the United States at this point in time from what I'm understanding, is the one place that is most infected than any other place on the globe, and the motherland, Africa itself, is the least infected of the places on the globe. But you see, the pendulum is swinging, and the results thereof are beyond average comprehension. So we need to use alternate sight to see these things in a different light. The we, We're going to go, I'm going to finish out the reading here mm -hmm. um, and unless I have some more conversation. Anybody wishing to make comment, feel free to uh, put it in the chat, which is fine. Um, I'm going to actually start with where we were and I'm just going to read through your reason and your passion are the rudder and the sails 
of your seafaring soul. If either your sails or your rudder be broken, you can but toss and drift, or else be held at a standstill in mid-seas. For reason alone is a force confining, and passion unattended is a flame that burns to its own destruction. Therefore, let your soul exalt your reason to the height of passion, that it may sing, and let it direct your passion with reason that your passion may live through its own daily resurrection, daily resurrection, and like the phoenix, rise above its own ashes. I would have you consider your judgment and your appetite even, as you would two love guests in your house. Again, we're talking of two things, judgment and appetite, because you know me. I can sit at a table <laughs> and yes, <he> can. <laughs> my appetite will tell me, eat the rest of that food right there, go ahead and eat it. But my judgment tells me, well, you really don't need to eat all of that because you're full. I'm just saying, I'll continue reading. <laughs> um, I would have you consider your judgment and your appetite, even as you would two love guests in your house. Surely you would not honor one guest above the other. For he who is more mindful of one loses the love and the faith of both. Among the hills, when you sit in the cool shade of the white poplars, those are the white trees, sharing the peace and serenity of distant fields and meadows. Then let your heart say in silence, God rest in reason. That's a nice place of meditation. Yeah, absolutely. And when the storm comes and the mighty wind shakes the forest, hey Tracy, hey Tracy, and thunder and lightning proclaims the majesty of the sky. And you know that can be some awesome, scary stuff sometimes. <laughs> 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 then let your heart say in awe, God moves in passion. And since you are a breath in God's sphere and a leaf in God's forest. You too should rest in reason and move in passion. Oh, I felt good on that one. <laughs> I felt good on that one. Because <laughs> think about that. Feel yourself when you are in meditation and when you are looking into the meadow and the nice breeze is coming along and you can feel that breeze coming through and it just feels so good to be there and you're with somebody you love <laughs> and you're like, hey, oh, this is so nice to be here, isn't it? And, and, and then you're there with the one you love. And you can see nature. And you just sit in silence. And when you do, you hear the birds. And you hear the rustling of the trees. Moving ever so gently. As the breeze is just such a delight to capture it as it comes. But in the same place. comes the storm that'll make you get up, pack up your bags and head on home because you want that shelter that you know may not be there, but you want to honor that which is the passion that has been expressed through that which is still God. For we are in the atmosphere of love's power. I have here this reading, it says, passion is the engine of our life's experience 
expressed as sails that capture the power of the wind of God's breath. There can be a gentle breeze or a gale force wind, but movement without direction or constraint can be either meaningless or destructive at worst. When forced against our own will, we can crash into the rocks that show no mercy. Intelligence, in conjunction with divine guidance, knows how to reason these to have the grace and mercy that comes with love to have us arrive safely to the shore of our destiny. If the heart is linked to God, our elements are as well. To live in tranquility is to find a balance between the wind that pushes and the forest that surrounds us. Any comments you have there? <laughs> well, I guess that's uh, not yet. So, uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, essentially, you know, in in a very distilled way, because he said a lot of words to say it. Um, be in that place of of honoring what is going on within you and being honest and transparent with yourself with what is going on within you whether or not it comes to reason or passion and surrender to the divine in order to be in balance with both reason and passion for the most optimal result that's what I got from what you said but you you can correct me if uh, if I did not quite come across, no, that was fine. That was fine, because um, there's there's a, a a comment that I see here that I wanted to share. I saw there was something went across the screen. Was that yes, good? Star Talk. Okay. Um, now it says this may sound like a bit of a tangent, but I'm reminded of the imagery of the Christian nativity in the traditional iconic sense we see that the infant Christ on a bed of straw in a manger surrounded by animals. And the reason why I brought that up is because I said that to live in tranquility is to find a place between the wind that pushes and the forest that surrounds. And we spoke earlier where it said that and since you are a breath in God's sphere, okay, in the presence of that which is created of the one who creates all and a leaf in the forest so if all that there is you are just merely the leaf of a forest and there are many forests and there are many trees in the forest and then when you multiply that upon that which is multiplied upon that we are just a small portion yet there is still significance. So, in this reading, it, it goes as follows. We see the infant Christ on the bed of straw in the manger surrounded by animals. In the Gospel tale, two animals are mentioned, specifically an ox and an ass, which is a donkey. So, you know, don't imagine something other than that. It might be a tangent. <laughs> and then so it says... Why these two animals? Esoteric Christian teachings sometimes explain in this manner that the ox, an ancient symbol of Venus, represents sensuality and passion. The ass can be seen as embodying either the ego or reason. Why are they, what are they doing in this image of divine birth? Now catch this, I think it's interesting. Notice that they are not suppressed. The ox and the ass are not dead or chained. No, they rest. They are at peace. Tamed by the presence 
of spiritual light. More than that, they are actually protecting the infant, giving him their strength. As one 20th century Christian teacher phrased it, they are warming the Christ child with their breath. Viewed this way, the nativity gives us an image, not of suppression, but of integration of the energies of life in support of the awakening soul. I like that. I wanted to share that because I thought it was pretty interesting because we, 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 we may not see it, but it's true. Reason supports passion. So why would you live in a house with two loved guests and not honor one guest or as a book says surely you would not honor one guest above the other for he who is more mindful of one loses the love and the faith of both so reason supports passion and the need for the two is the expression of our living in this life's experience. Tracy says she's never thought about animals in that manner. Interesting. Oftentimes in many cultures, especially the indigenous people of the Americas, they have relegated an animal spirit to each of us but with us being detached from our roots for this too is probably true of those from the motherland we don't see these things from this perspective anymore um, the major reflection of animal correlation is that found in scripture of the eagle and the lion because when you think of the Christ experience the God force that is brought forth there those are the only two animals that I recall that are mentioned and here it's brought forth that it is the ox and the ass and then we also find that there is that expression of the lamb so the relegation of the animal spirits is a significant component to our expressions for there are some people when you give look to them you can see a force that can be associated with a creature. Mm. You know? Hey. <laughs> so yeah, you know, most times most times we we uh when we're stubborn like a mule. Mm-hmm. Sly like a fox. Um uh, deceiving like a snake. snake. Mm -hmm. And boy well I've had experiences with snakes, but I'm telling you, uh they 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 Whew. You can walk up on one and don't even know it until you know it. And then you're, whoa. Or they can sneak up on you if you're not careful. But fortunately, we don't have many venomous snakes in our area. But uh, when they want to get away, they know how to get away. I've come across a lot of black snakes and uh, they're not easy to catch. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they hit it for... You know, you would never think something without legs can move so fast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, hey, you know, move, move so fast and move sideways too. Mm -hmm. I tell you, 
um, yeah, so um, I hope that you've enjoyed our, our presentation of this portion of Khalil Gibran. Uh, speak to us of reason and passion mm -hmm. because it's so important to recognize the aspect of freedom that needs to be expressed of these two elements, which is what we spoke on last week. And feel free to go through our Facebook page and you can look at all of the previous uh, uh, posts that we've made in regards to the prophet. Because we go as deeply as we possibly can within them um, by divine guidance so that we don't be too much of a uh, distraction to what the artist is bringing. But you know that we do this out of love. And because of love, we are here. So, we love you. That's what we do. We can't help ourselves. I don't know what's going on. It's got me. It's got me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, God just laughed with us just a moment ago. So. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> All righty. So, is there anything else you would like to add? Well, I guess I'm supposed to read this section right here. I'm going to see if I can read this section right here if it makes sense to you. It says, Nature perfectly represents the synthesis of reason and passion. Therefore, as beings that exist within God's realm, we should follow this example of resting in reason and moving in passion, in perfect balance and harmony. Therefore, reason supports passion, and in observing nature, the soul can find God easier. Through the peace of reason, in the surrender, to nature, sometimes better than in a seat on a pew alone inside a church. For the reasoning together is good, but it is not better, but is it not better to observe in silence the nature of man and earth, so to come together to have something of which to reason upon? I'm kind of glad I read that. So we'll come to reason next week with the next section that tells us of pain. Pain. Mm -hmm. You might want to join us for that one because it's not, it's, I promise you, it's not what you think it is. <laughs> None of this book has been so far. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a blessing in and of itself. Yes. So we are grateful to be able to share as we are. And um, we, we find joy in doing so, as you can see. And I hope the joy has been relayed to you as well. So with that being said, I'll, 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 uh, or I'll ask our name to close us out with what I like about her, her phrase. So please do. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. We thank God for you. And we know that wherever you are, God is. Namaste. Bye, family.